he's still going for it. Oh, he's got through. Hello everyone, my name's Kai Zamit and I'm a director, cinematographer and writer. And today, thanks to you guys, we're looking at Astartes. How these videos work is I break it down into two parts. The first part is I watch it and give you my reaction to said medium. And then the second part of the video is I will break it down as a filmmaker. I look at it again. Video editing, the cinematography, was it a certain lens style that they use? The overall story perhaps. Hopefully by the end of today's video you'd have learned something or seen a glimpse behind the curtain when it comes to filmmaking. Let's get on with it shall we? Play the tape. Whoa, look at that for a shot. Whoa, that's amazing. I love that lighting over the top. immediately invested in this. It starts. Oh, look at the depth of field on that. It's a really full frame. This is amazing. Oh, he's gone in the ship. Oh, wow. Sound effect. Cool, don't mess with these guys. Whoa, who's that? I like I love the aesthetic he's designed. that door and what's behind the door I love the way the camera is sticking with them wow I got a framing on that I was gonna shoot from through the wall <laughs> okay, that was good. Wow, these guys are amazing. This must be like the best team going. Look at all these Dutch angles that these guys using. They just mowed down their own team. Hell. <laughs> that was well good. Oh wow, look at this. Really liking the lighting. It's a blue all overhead. Oh, they're surrounded them, have they? Oh wow! The... Oh, I like those. Oh, that's such a cool effect. Whoa! I look at him go. The way the camera goes with him as well, it just emphasises speed. 
Oh, okay. These these guys are really powerful. Oh, he's got like, the false ability. Amazing. What's it? Oh, he's still going for it. Oh, he's got throat. <gasps> Yo! This is made by one person? You're taking the bats. I'm literally stunned. This is amazing. I want to see a, a full feature film on this. Of this, of this caliber. Please tell me that's not at the end. Oh good, got some more. <laughs> that's how much I'm enjoying it. I don't want it to end. I love these these shots that he keeps doing just over their head. This guy. Oh, I like that the way it's over him like that. Oh, that was a nice cut. Oh, that's cool. The lighting. What was that? What does that mean? He's really using the black here to, to transition and to keep you guessing when you're looking at certain areas. Your eye is just drawn up to the eye. Or certain areas on the screen. Whoa, what is that thing? This is great. I have no idea what the law is on this or what that is. But I'm really enjoying this, just just purely for the mystery. What is that from an outsider looking in? I like that. That's proper showing teamwork. make this in, this one guy. It's incredible. Got 
like psychic abilities. Oh, something's happened. Oh, is he crap? Did him? Oh dear. <laughs> oh, is that a vision of this? Oh, it's proper absorbing them. Oh, I just shredded his arm. Wow. Someone told me in the comment section that it was done by one guy and then he got picked up by Games Workshop or, or work now works for them and I can see why. Completely what transported him. Whoa. Oh, he's on his own. Oh, and that's it. I cannot believe one person made that. That must have taken him years. I assume it's at him. Jesus, that was inc that was incredible. I got really excited then at the very end when uh, when that yellow space marine popped up. I literally thought, oh my god, I got more. Even yes, I want to see more. But no. <laughs> I'm going to start this off immediately by saying I'm going to put my hand up and say I feel that was one of the best cinematics that I've seen or short films that I've ever seen. It was that good and I can't believe one person made that. This guy is a fantastic storyteller. I don't know how long these took to make um, but they are they are a piece of art and and the fact as I said I'm gonna put my hand up and say yeah that was one of the best cinematics I've ever seen and I'm fussy but it was that damn good. Wow I'm blown away to be honest. To me everything about Astartes was a massive pitch sale so what I mean by that is you would as a storyteller if you have a vision or a director if you have a vision of a story that you want to tell in a certain way you would film it and shoot it in that direction and then you would pitch it to a studio to get funding. There was one uh, years ago about Mortal Kombat a guy made a short film a live action version and it was his vision and then Warner Brothers picked it up and then they turned it into a web series. One thing I really like about all the episodes is that the camera is always moving. The camera was always going round, it was moving left and right, up and down, swooping in and out. And if the camera was static, it was the subjects in the shot that were moving. And this is a great wave of storytelling. It gets you from A 
the beginning of the film to be the end of the film on a perfect flow. It doesn't feel like you're stopping for any reason. If I shoot or direct anything, I always, if I've got the camera, I'm always moving. Every time you see me, I'm always pulling sort of funny leg po and poses, doing different movements, because I want the camera to always move. And again, if I'm static, then I get the subject to move. So your eye is continually up, down, left and right, or the camera is taking you instead. They did what you should always do when you reveal a character, and that's in shots of three. Uh, the only difference this time is that they showed one shot twice, but it was enough to give you that three shot look before you get the full Space Marine in all his glory sitting there. Fantastic. I have a few favorite shots throughout the whole series of Astartes. One of my favorite ones, it was literally one of the starting shots, and that's them walking down the hallway. The way it was lit, you know, overhead lighting, fantastic. The way they revealed the Space Marine, and the light going over them it was highlighting them under every other sort of step and I love that it was almost a bit like a product reveal how you get the light going over something and it really made the armor shine lovely it's one of my favorite shots one thing I picked up on is at the beginning with the Space Marines every shot of them the camera is always stabilized so it means it's nice and smooth and as the mission went on the camera became more shaky and why does that why is that a big thing well actually what it shows us as a viewer that the Space Marines are in control, hence the camera is nice and stabilized. As the film goes on, they start to lose control or the, the fight scenes are a bit more intense, especially near the end as they get sort of sucked into the, the orb type thing, then the camera becomes very shaky and it means that they've lost control. The filmmaker really understands his shots and composition. And what I mean by that is every shot is full. He's using maximum layers. So he's got his foreground, he's got his main ground being the subject normally and then the background. Um, even if it's um, a character walking down a hallway, he uses the wall to fill the shot so your eye is drawn somewhere else. It's beautifully done. The cinematography is fantastic. Not even mentioning the lighting, but just the camera positioning and the composition beautiful stuff absolutely stunning to be honest immediately for episode two the start of it he used a one -a shot a one -a shot if you don't know is one continuous shot a lot of filmmakers are doing it now and the whole point of that is is to emphasize a journey of a character however the problem is with one -a shots is your eyes can get bored very easy it's actually every second seven seconds that your eyes get bored so what he did is he put the two robotic spheres or orbs and because your eye is looking at them darting off into the asteroid field or, or belt whatever it is it then keeps your eyes moving so you don't get bored if you notice how youtube videos now are cut a lot faster and that's because of retention by having faster cuts your retention rate goes up and you're like, oh okay i'm going to keep invested and so this guy he put the robot orbs in there to keep your eyes moving to different parts of the screen so you can then have the payoff of it then crashing through the ship at the end which was great. The music build was there. So what I mean by that is you had the ticking sound or the clock sound, and that was the dun, 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 within the music. That draws you in, it completely sucks you into the film because you, you feel like you're running out of time or you, you are like what they are on a mission to get the job done. And yeah, it really, it's one of my favorite things with music scores. A lot of Hans Zimmer music has that, that dun, 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 and this had it, and it was fantastic. What I really like is as they come bursting through, he completely cuts the music off and he emphasizes the movement of the Space Marines. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Astartes was the lighting. Being a cinematographer myself, I love how things are lit and that's what I look for. It draws you in, it gives you complete character and shape of your film. It's actually how you shape a character. And what he's done and his main thing here is actually he does it with two light sources. He loves an overhead lighting or he has a key light which is sort of the main source of lighting and then you will have an ambience light just off to the side just to give you the pickup or the highlights and I love that if I ever do shoots now I try to use a two lighting setup because it makes your image more contrasty it's called a low key where a high key is very high and you just don't find that in commercials it's more of a brighter look so the background is exposed the same as the front where a low key look is all very contrasty it's that very darker image and this low key look with the two lighting setup, chef's kiss, I, to me, that's my favorite part of this, the whole Astartes web series. He showed the Space Marines looking cool and epic and every time he did, he shot the camera up at them. 
What does it mean when you shoot the camera up at your subject? It actually gives them power. If you shoot down, it makes them look weak and inferior. But in this case, he shot up. Anytime there was a cool shot of them coming through the smoke, actually some of my favorite shots were the looking up at them. And yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. So yeah, so look out for camera movement when you're watching films. If you wanna see someone's powerful, camera goes up. Wanna see them looking weak, the camera shoots down. Sometimes it's a mixture um, and you need it for a story flow, but if something epic happens on screen and someone looks cool, the camera is always shooting up at them. And speaking of camera angles, this filmmaker loved a Dutch angle or a Dutch tilt. That's some of my favorite shots. And what that is, is where the camera is not set like this, where it's straight, it'll be like that, it's off to the side. And what it does, it emphasizes what you're seeing. And for this case, he used it to elongate his shots. You see a gunshot or you, you see a big hallway. He dutched angled it, or as I said, dutch tilted it, and it made it look elongated. I remember there was a shot of the sniper and it had a dutch angle and it just looked fantastic. It also makes your cinematography look better. I love dutch angles. If you can never do it, do it. It just brings your characters to life and makes you look like you've got more tools and skill sets available within your bag. In some of the shots he used a or what it appeared to be a wide angle lens and by having that it what it does it gave you a nice draw distance. One it shows a massive space but two, if there's anything off in the field or a bit of a depth or distance like this, for example, it makes it look longer. If there was a movement up close to the lens, like I'm using a wide angled lens here, any movement coming up close will exaggerate the movement, but he mainly used it to give that nice draw distance and, and ultimately filling out his shots. And it was the fantastic use of the darkness. It was basically a character itself. The way he used it, the way it shaped the characters, the way, and then he used it for hidden transitions to cut from one shot to another shot. That was lovely. But ultimately, I would say it was more of a subtext. It's a dark world, this Warhammer 40K universe. So he visually shows it in the darkness. There was so much darkness within it, you, you're basically, your eye was being shaped and told where to go. There was a sticky shot, and what I mean by that, and that's a fixed item within um, the frame. And to give you an example, that would be the plasma pistol on the Space Marine's leg. He pulled it off and the plasma pistol basically stayed in the middle of the shot. It was a sticky shot as if the camera was stuck to it and it went round and he, and he went and fired it. What they're used for is to give a story beat to a certain item that is used within the film itself. Going on from the sticky shot, he also used this to emphasize movement. There was a shot where the Space Marine is running very, very fast. The Space Marine is stuck in the shot. And what's beautiful about this is he knows how to use the camera movement, the visual narrative, to make you feel something. So we had two characters being surrounded by the Space Marines. That was fantastic. And to emphasize this, what he did is he brought the camera around. He swooped it around the subject. By doing that, it visually tells you that they are being surrounded. Use foreground elements to swoop past the subject and what that does is it emphasizes the motion of being surrounded and also gives you a bit more visual speed when you're looking at it. The fight scene was fantastic. What I really liked was he used sound effects primarily and foley, so the body motion parts without the music. By stripping back the music, every movement or every time the Space Marine or the other characters moved, it was like do or die. Each movement felt critical. Could it be the character's last move? You know, the space marine going in with the knife or the other character with his sort of force field. It was beautifully done. So if you want something to be a bit more intense, use sound effects and foley work being the sound of clothes and armor, less music. A good fight scene will always show you why it's <laughs> And I mean from head to toe, and by doing that, it allows you to see what's actually going on. A lot of filmmakers, when they're making uh, fight scenes and things like that, and even blockbusters are guilty of doing this, they make the action too close. So there's the Bourne Identity films. The Yes, it works to a certain degree, but you can't actually see what's going on. It's too shaky, and the, the shots are too tight. Is that a punch? Is that a kick? I don't know, you tell me. But with this, because he had the wide scenes, you could actually see what was going on. So he had the force bubble around him, then it was holding the space beam with the force. You wanna be able to see martial arts or a fight scene, you have to see it and a wide is how you do that. Even though I said fight scenes should be more about wides, don't forget to add close-ups in there. He did this and he did them well. Rather than being body parts moving very, very close, what he actually did the extreme close-ups of was the eyes. 
why. The reason why you want to film eyes is because it tells you everything that you need to know. It is the most important body part. Even though they're wearing helmets, they had glass lenses, he still shot them up close and the reason being is because it feeds you the emotion of the story. How does that character feel? We can tell because we're that close. He's trying to bring the knife in, he's struggling bring it in close, but we've got the wire to back it up to tell us what he's doing. Same as the other character, he's got him in, in his grasp, yet he brings it really close because we can tell that the character's got the intent to stop him and to kill him. If you're ever going to film eyes, make sure you've got catchment in it. So what I mean by that is the light in the eye or at least a light source. I always try to do this with my clients. Not only does it lift your production values up, but it brings your character to life or your subject to life. It's beautiful. The filmmaker very cleverly used his environment to show speed of the character. So when the Space Marine's running or a gun swooping around or the knife's going in, he used the background to emphasize it, okay? You can't just film something or a subject and then fast forward it in post-production, it doesn't work. What you can do, however, as well as using the environment, is you can under crank your camera, um, which means you're just changing the frame rate. I'll go into that another time because that gets a little bit more technical and it's a little bit more advanced when it comes to filmmaking. But in this case, he used the environment around the characters to emphasize the speed of what they were going. As the starties went on, he started to use more camera movement and use more lighting to tell you, the viewer, where to look. An example of this is when we're tracking behind the Space Marine and then the camera tilts up towards this orb thing and then it comes down onto another Space Marine or it goes onto some, another character. And yeah, he's using shadows and lighting to tell you where he wants you to look because it's obviously a crucial part to the story. One of my favorite sayings and within storytelling is less is more. And what I mean by that is when we get to hear the first voice, it's a treat, it's a reward or a nice surprise. The voice becomes more powerful because the whole film, it's been non-dialogue, it's been sound effects, foley work, ambience, music on this non-dialogue journey. So now we've got it, we're like, wow, okay, you're gonna start listening. Mainly the films were built on sound effects and ambience. There was a subtle tone, electronic score sort of going on underneath, but primarily it was sound effects. It emphasized the movement of the characters. And I really, really like that. It's a bit hard to tell what is music and what is sound effects. And that's how you know you've got a lovely mix or the perfect mix is, as I said, you don't know what's music or what sound effects. It just becomes, this whole organic score, it's beautiful. And lastly, the color grade, I have to bring this up because they're so striking. You got the blue and black look and you got the orange and black look, which is obviously at the very end. But that blue and black was gorgeous. It just, it told us about the world, the stripped down of color. It emphasized the blacks. The blue is just so cold and negative. It helped enhance my experience while watching it. And then the orange was obviously there to help explain, oh, this is a wasteland and a completely different scene. But my favorite part was really the blue and black. It allowed not only all this emotion to come from this darkness, but it allowed the gunfire, the laser fire to pop on screen. But primarily what you wanna use a color grade for is to enhance the viewer's experience. If you're feeling sad, put blue in there. If you're feeling angry, well, red. Or you use it in a case to world build, which is what the filmmaker has done here. And there you have it, that was my reaction and thoughts on Astartes. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, as it really does help out the channel. And would you like to see some more? Well, over there, I've gone and put another reaction video for you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.